when did you first encounter Psyche or when did Psyche find you and what was the, the most intriguing part for you about it? All right, well, you said it correctly for me that Psyche <laughs> found me because I was not looking for it, Lars. I was not looking for Psyche one bit at all. In fact, I refused it when other people had introduced it to me and the, uh, there was a business group I was going to every Thursday morning. And um, I told several people, I'm not interested, I'm not interested, I'm not interested. And so I um, had one other lady who was very persistent though, her name is Jessica, and she continued to press me about this opportunity to learn more about Psyche, and I just finally said, stop it. You know, I'm not interested, leave me alone. <laughs> so <laughs> in retrospect, she is the kind of person that can see a person's future. Oh. And I didn't realize that <laughs> at that moment. I mean, I knew it about her, but I forgot about it in that moment because I was so irritated because everybody kept bugging me. And so I, um, I shut that door. And then I was with my husband and I was looking at um, an online newsletter and I signed up for this newsletter and Bruce Lipton was coming to town. And so was uh, two other speakers. There was Greg Braden and another person that I really had never heard anything about either. And I, I didn't know anything about Bruce Lipton at all. Okay. I hadn't even heard his name. They were coming to Denver in a trio for a speaking engagement. And it was just a one day thing. And that was Hay House Productions was putting it on. And so my husband got all excited. And he says, we've got to go, we've got to go. Bruce Lipton's coming to town. Oh my God, we've got to go. And buy the tickets, buy the tickets. And for him to get that animated and to be that excited about anything was highly unusual. So I was like, okay, okay, I'll buy them. <laughs> so we went, that was in May of 2009, I think it was. And then um, we went and it was fantastic. Loved Greg Braden, thought that was really the, the icing on the cake. But when Bruce Lipton took the stage, everything lit up like the whole world just exploded in front of my eyes and I thought oh my god somebody understands uh how I think what I think about biology and you know I, I grew up in a science-based home so everything was all about science and it all made sense and then I thought well I need to understand more about how this works and how do we get you know how do we get things to change because the sharing he was giving was about the biology of belief, his book that had been released. So Hay House Productions had this huge table set up in the back of the room with multiple cash registers and piles and piles and piles of materials and books and audio cassettes and whatever else back there. Yeah. But over in the other side of this room, there was this little eight foot table that was all by itself, no cash registers, no people attending it, nothing. But I saw there were little like stacks, maybe this tall, of something on it. So I wandered over there to see what it was. And there were these little paper sleeved uh, DVDs that had Bruce Lipton's picture on it. And I was like, huh, okay, well, guess I'll grab a couple of these. They look like they're free, kind of like, you know, calling cards would be. So I took one home, actually took two home. And my husband and I sat down and watched it that night. And my jaw hit the floor after the end of the presentation, because it was Bruce Lipton giving an hour of information. And then Rob Williams, who is the originator of Psyche, giving another hour of information. And I was like, scoop up my, you know, scoop up my jaw off the floor. <laughs> because I said, Oh, my God, this is what Jessica and the others were telling me about. Oh, my God, how could I have been so blind? So then I told my husband, we've got to learn this, we've, we've, we've got to figure out what this is all about. So there was a class coming up in July, signed up for that. And the rest is history, as they say, because it was, um, fascinating to me. Now I'd been doing hypnotherapy work for a couple of years before that. And I was just enamored with hypnotherapy, loved it, really appreciated the opportunities to help people with that, oops, with that modality. Yeah. But, um, but there, there were some roadblocks I was experiencing with that. And I, it was like, something was stopping me from being really successful. And so with, with, with hypnotherapy, with the hypnotherapy okay yeah yeah and I couldn't figure it out because I was doing all the things I thought were the right thing to do but it was um and literally in, in my world it was spirit shutting the door on that 
that modality saying, this is not the path for you to go. But I was so stubborn because I am. (laughs) But but, um, then I was reoriented towards this whole thing about Psyche. And once I started getting involved in the whole Psyche experience and learning more about me through the use of those processes, everything started to open up, but not down the hypnotherapy road. It was opening up down the Psyche road. And so that was in July. And then in December, um, I had done all the classes multiple times by December. And December was the Divine Integration Retreat. And that is all about helping um, people really embrace their experience more fully with the divine. Now, we don't ever talk about um, any kind of dogma or anything like that, because we really honor each person's spiritual journey, whatever they're engaged in is right for them. And so I went to this retreat over the weekend and everybody was having these amazing experiences. And I was like, well, when's my experience going to be, you know, when, when am I going to get the big breakthrough? <laughs> and it didn't happen for me on Sunday because everybody was having these amazing things come to their awareness and they were having, you know, walls tumble down that had been roadblocks forever. And it didn't happen for me until on Monday morning after the retreat was over and we were back home and I was blow drying my hair. And all of a sudden I literally heard a voice in my ear say to me, become an instructor. And I was like, oh, hell no, I'm not going to do that. (laughs) Because I already saw the level of commitment that was required and things like that. But I was using the processes in my life. They were making a huge difference for me. I was feeling really comfortable and more confident in my skin. I loved what it was offering me. I started sharing it more with the clients that I had. They were loving it. And I just, I was like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to become an instructor because that's too much. You know, it would take me away from home a lot. I would be traveling. I would see my kids as often and all these other things. And I had adult kids at that point, but still it was a, you know, a lot. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I heard the, heard the prompting. I heard it a second time. I had my husband um, check with me on that. I asked him what he thought, all those things. And he was excited about it. He said, I think you should do it. I think it's really what you're here to do. And oh my God, Lars, I had such resistance though, because my mom had been a teacher and I was always, you know, um, I was not, in love with school. I hated school. I hated teachers. I hated all of that stuff. And I could never see myself as one. But you know what? It was exactly where I needed to be because the um, the teaching is not the issue. It was my perception of teachers and the the stuff that, you know, we go through as kids in school uh, that was all really coloring that world for me. And so I did a lot of work on accepting myself as an instructor and, and being comfortable and confident and happy being an instructor uh, of the psyche processes. And so that ended up opening up my entire world. And of course, now here I am, I'm in my 11th year of teaching yeah. and I can't imagine myself ever doing anything different because it is so engaging and it's so much fun to help people change their lives. And of course, this is not about... Um, me being the one that makes that happen it's more about introducing the information and then watching everybody interface with it and watching the miracles that they create in their own life with the engagement of these tools so it's it's just a transfer of knowledge from one brain to all these other brains and helping people and light up and you're so good at it i mean i did i did a course with you it was amazing Oh, thank you. You're really, really good at it. So I'm glad yeah, you chose I, that path. <laughs> I am too. Now I am. I'm really tickled about it. But boy, it was a rough go at first. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Wow. So that's how I got started. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. So, sure. um, and in that whole journey, what was like from your personal point of view, what was like an eye opening experience in what Psyche brought you aside from you? changing your professional course pretty much but yeah. what was what was a powerful personal experience well there's so many of them Lars um, I mean I could tell you about my spiritual journey with it I could tell you about public speaking and how terrified I used to be to be in front of people um, I was a very very shy kid growing up and so to be around people at all was absolutely terrifying to me 
and I would prefer just to be alone in my room at home with the door closed so that I didn't have to interface with anyone because it was too scary mm -hmm. and I hated school that was another reason I hated school <laughs> because I had to be around all these other kids and they were scary to me um, my health has changed dramatically um, since I got involved with Psyche, I used to be sick all the time. I'd be on antibiotics anywhere from five to eight times a year. And I thought that was normal. Oh, wow. So now, okay. now I use no antibiotics. I use nothing else except some supplements here and there. And even with the supplementation, I've really decreased substantially in that. So I can maintain my health really well, you know, good food and, um, eating properly for my, my body. Um, so that's been really big. Um, friendships have really changed for me. I've, uh, I've gotten away from being in really codependent relationships and having um, challenges with people that um, I would keep them in my life just to make me feel better versus having real high quality relationships that um, people would appropriately challenge me and I could challenge them and we could have great discussions and we would both grow from it. That's more now what I have. Um, people really showing up for me and um, that that's huge. You know, that's really huge to have that kind of uh, uh, support in one, one's life. I've worked a lot with grief and loss. Uh, my husband died this past uh, March and he was 23 years my senior. So um, he developed Alzheimer's and was going down a, you know, a declining slope that was hard and challenging and painful for both of us and having to work to help move him from our home environment that was safe and secure for him um, to an environment where he was living in assisted living and helping him and myself adjust to those changes. And then of course his passing and, and to move through that grief period of that final loss, the final goodbye. Um, one of the stories that's recently um, been recounted to me by a woman who studied with me several years ago is that she was um, having a lot of struggle in her life and she was feeling very frustrated about things, but she, um, didn't really have a, a wonderful partner in her life. She wanted one. She was struggling with where she was going to live and it seemed frustrating and like everything was a fight to have that um, work out for her. She has children that are between their teenage years and adulthood and there was difficulty with those relationships as well. And she'd had a physical experience with an amputation and that was giving her some difficulty and pain. And so she was just like, I don't know, can Psyche help me with these things? And so we did some work as uh, she had attended the workshops and had really gotten a lot of value out of it. And of course, the most important thing about attending a workshop is going home and continuing to use the process is to help oneself. This is all about self-responsibility. It's about you are in control of your future. It's up to you to do your own personal work and so she took it on and she said oh my god you would never guess what's happened things um some of the things with my kids are better some are not as good yet she's still got a lot of hope in a couple of those um, older adult um, children relationships but her younger kids are with her and she has moved from one community to another community that's very nature-based she's living by a lake now things opened up where this house was basically kind of um, dropped in her lap and very reasonable uh, rent rate that she could afford. Mm -hmm. An amazing man mm -hmm. has come into her life that's in that same community. It's just like, you know, so many things have happened for her to move her forward and her physical challenges are better as well. And it's just, it's things like that where you don't always know exactly what's gonna happen when you engage with the psyche processes, but you start doing the, the work of the processes and then the results of those start showing their fruit. And so, you know, here it is a couple of years later and she's having this wonderful experience in her life. Um, another gentleman that I've worked with in the class, uh, he came to the workshop in uh, January of this year and he was just wrapping up the end of a divorce that was very, very painful for him. And it was really even difficult for him to be fully present in the workshop because he had so much um, uh, frustration and, and um, concern about just getting the details you know, finished. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. checks written and businesses changed and bank accounts changed and you know all those kinds of details. Mm-hmm. So he was really mm-hmm. having a difficult time being present. But he he did have one experience he wanted some help with that was pretty potent, and that was a relationship with his brother um, from their childhood. And so I helped him with a what we call a Uh, transform the perception of a stressful situation process. And he was able to transform this very, very stressful and upsetting experience with his brother that literally, literally lasted over a period of years. And in just that one moment, um, he was able to shift his entire understanding of what that was all about and to forgive himself and to forgive his brother for all of the challenges that they had encountered, which had really held this man um, in a much more small capacity uh, because he had looked up to this older brother so very much. So that changed. And then he decided to come back again um, to review the workshop after things had settled down and he was more um, grounded, I would say. And he came back in May and reviewed the basic workshop again. And this time he um, was recognizing for himself that he was dealing with uh, some grief over the loss of the relationship. And at first he was focused on thinking it was grief over the loss of the the woman that he'd been with for all these years. But I said, well, what if it's really grief about just the loss of the relationship? You've invested a lot of time, you've invested a lot of energy, you've invested financially in the relationship and things like that. And when I just said the word your grief or the words you're grieving, that all of a sudden just made all the pieces fall into place. And he goes, oh my God, that's what I'm experiencing. That's what's going on for me. And so just having that one little word, grief, come into play was able to help him shift his perception of what was really going on because he felt so confused by the feelings he was experiencing. So then we worked on that whole experience and he was able to create a huge shift in that arena of his life as well. And when he went back to the community, because he still had some business um, transactions in that community, he went back to that community the very next day. So that was on a Sunday, then he went back on Monday and he said it was like deja vu, driving around the city, not, not knowing exactly why he was feeling so light and so unattached to everything, except that's what we had worked on for him to have that be his reality. But here he was in this place where he had had all of these amazing connections. And yet it was so surreal for him to just be there present and having nothing reactive, having no emotion, um, no tears, no, no, no joy either necessarily. It was just kind of a neutral experience. And he was so astounded by it. So he had even gone to the extent of having uh, a dinner at uh, a favorite restaurant that he and his former wife had gone to just to really put it to the test and to find out, you know, gee, did it even work here in this environment? And to his surprise, of course, he was very neutral about the whole thing. And even the same table and the same uh, bartender that they had, you know, worked with or had served them years before was his server again. Wow. <laughs> he was just like, wow, Full this on. is amazing. I'm having no reaction, none at all. And so that really made, he was, he would say he was a skeptic, you know, about the psyche processes, but after that experience, and of course the one with his brother, he's like, man, this thing really works. And so now he's all gung-ho about it and really enjoying uh, the benefits that Psyche continues to offer him. Right? We never know exactly where or how uh, the processes are going to help us. Mm-hmm. But what we know is that Psyche can always assist us with whatever it is that we're working on. And not to be locked in to a, a particular outcome, because sometimes the outcomes are even better than we can imagine. So it's just, it's amazing what Psyche can help us with. And to stay open and curious to everything that we're engaging in, because what I call spirit or God or universe for me, because I look at that as more my higher knowing, yeah. we connect with that experience and there's something even better that God or universe has in mind for us than what we can even imagine. So, you know, it's life is a surprise and we get to have these wonderful experiences with uh, interacting with that spiritual nature that we have within ourselves. And if we can stay open and curious to something better than what we've had, 
most of the time it comes. I'm going to say I, I really like to think about um, Psyche as opening us up to miracles. And I define miracles as things that are hoped for, but are not really ever expected, like they're never going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and yet something yeah. wonderful happens and these neat miracles do occur. And it's really our, our own limitations and our thinking and our belief structures that prevent the miracles from being noticed every single moment of every single day. Because just the fact that we're alive every day, that we wake up each morning, that's a miracle. That's something that my husband and I used to talk about is, well, I woke up this morning, you know, it's a miracle. <laughs> so, <It's dark. laughs> yeah, it is. It's like, there's, there's my gym right there. And we, um, we take for granted the, the true gift that we have every day of waking up and being able to embrace another day, even if it brings challenges. Yeah. And I look at challenges very differently now. There are opportunities for growth. I don't look at them as something to be avoided. I don't look at them as something to run away from. I say, okay, so here's this challenge. It's obviously here for some really important reason. I have the opportunity to grow. How am I going to deal with this? Mm -hmm. And not all of them are always fun. But if I utilize the psyche processes to support me dealing with that challenge, whatever it is, then I am able to move through it more quickly, more easily, usually much more productively as well. And to keep myself in a higher vibration where I'm, I'm open for those miracles, I'm open and ready for those things to shift gently and easily. And oftentimes they do. So I love that. <laughs> I love that the way you explained that and you started with uh, talking a bit about what what psyche is can you elaborate on your definition of psyche we all know it's it's very complex in the background it's the process itself is simple but how would you explain it in your own words oh, i think psyche is a set of spiritually based processes which allow us to embrace our experiences and transform into our true state as empowered beings here on the planet. I think that's the most important thing, Lars, that we have lost sight of. Because through all of the years that we've been alive, <clears throat> even if a child was listening to this, I knew as a child that I was, um, I was a powerful person. I was a powerful being. But going through my life, that got dumbed down and dumbed down and squashed and put under a basket and mushed up and thrown away and all those horrible things that happen to our self-esteem and our personal power because life can be pretty darn tough but when we start to say hey there's something more going on here there's something more powerful about me than what i've been led to believe and we start questioning who am i really who am i really anyway this this version of me that other people have told me is my truth is not really who I know myself to be. So when I ask myself truly, what is this all about? What do I need to do to help me? It's about taking on my own personal power. And it's about stepping back into my self-esteem about knowing that I'm valuable, knowing that I'm worthy, knowing that I deserve to have what I, I want in my life, whether that's a new position at a company or whether that's, um, you know, having a, a better car to drive or regardless of what it is that we feel will help us. Yeah. It isn't the material things that really matter anyway, but we, we notice that as we feel better about ourselves, we're ready to step into something even bigger, even better. And for me, the transformation of moving from this very disempowered being to this person that is huge and is less affected by the world and by all of the challenges that are going on, we learn to look at the world differently. We see the world literally through different set of eyes when we remove all the limitations that have been holding us back and holding us suppressed. So, you know, we're so much more than these bodies and these brains. We're really these beautiful spiritual energies that are um, having this human experience. And as we have this human experience, we're, we're supposed to keep growing. And that's the beautiful part about the psyche processes is that they really help us continue that spiritual growth and to help us remember that we're spiritual beings happening to have this human experience so that we don't get too wrapped up in all the troubles um, yeah. because this is just part of our picture it's not the entire picture okay yeah that makes sense and i think it's the this maintaining this perspective 
that mm -hmm. it all happens for a reason and every challenge is an opportunity. I think that's the hardest, hardest for most people to stay in that mindset and to be pulled into yes. the problem area and finding the path out of that and getting a different perception of what is happening. Right. Right. Well, life can be so difficult and we can get so wrapped up in those difficulties that we we forget our spiritual essence. We forget who we are. And that can be incredibly painful because not only are we forgetting our spiritual essence, but we make these problems seem like they're more important than anything else ever. And we forget that they're just opportunities for growth. And if we can back away from those and take a totally different perspective, that can be super helpful. One of the things I love about um, flying places is that as the plane is climbing, it gets to a place where, you know, a car looks like a, a, a pinhead and you're like, wow, it's, it's, it's a car, but it looks like it's just this little dot on the road and you can see the roads that normally look so big and wide, but they're just these little tiny lines that we're driving on. And so I think taking flights places and having a window seat yes. <laughs> is very helpful for us to remember perception perception is important for us to always be aware of because when we perceive something we think it's true we think it's the way it really is but another person from a different vantage point let's say somebody else could be over here let's see here somebody else could be over here somebody else could be here and here they're going to see the issue from a different perspective now when we see things from different perspectives it gives us the opportunity to have a much more global vision. And so sometimes being able to pull ourselves away from the, the problem that's so big right here gives us the opportunity to say, this is not such a big deal. Why am I making such a big deal out of this? Yeah. And then what would I rather have instead of what I think is the big deal? Because really, if you look at where the destination is, the destination where we're gonna get to going through the problem is much more valuable. What is your experience with other modalities? Because I think that's also the challenge for a lot of people that there's so much available. Well, there's so much available, but there's also sometimes it's hard, okay, which one to choose? I cannot try it all. What is your experience with that? Yeah, thanks for that question. It's a great question, Lars. There, you know, there are so many different modalities available right now, and it's super important for people to sense into what is going to be most helpful for them because um, we're not all ready or uh, interested in the same things at the same time. And that's a good thing, actually. So I, I look at what am I ready for? Mm. What to, to explore, whatever it is that I think I'm interested in to explore, what is this all about? What are the um, general principles behind that particular modality or company that is offering it. Um, I ask my, my people that are interested in taking a workshop with me, uh, and maybe they're considering working with a different instructor as well, or maybe they're looking at other modalities that they're considering studying. I'll say to them, go ahead and research all of those before you make a decision because you, you will give yourself the best gift if you do this from a well, uh, well versed or well understood perspective because Psyche isn't for everybody. Psyche is really um, a modality that brings us into self-responsibility. Without self-responsibility, we're never going to be able to take on our personal power. We can say, oh, I want to be you know, empowered. I want to be an empowered being. I want to be an enlightened being. And all of that sounds really great. But there's a beautiful line in the uh, movie I think it was, I can't remember the guy's name that was the actor, but it was the Spider-Man movie. And there's a particular scene in the first Spider-Man movie where the young man is sitting in the car with his uncle and the uncle has taken him downtown to go, go out for the evening. And of course the young man wants to go try out his spidey senses and you know do his squirt squirt with the you know spider things and swing from the buildings. So that's what he's all excited about. But the uncle says to him, um, I'm maybe butcher this quote, but uh, with great power comes great responsibility. Right. And that lands like boom, you know, in the movie, but the young man doesn't quite get it. 
So he's like, yeah, yeah, uncle. Okay. Well, you know, I'm going to, I'll see you tomorrow morning or whatever. I'll be home late tonight. I forget what the whole deal is, but he gets out of the car and then basically the uncle dies. You know, he, he has this situation that happens. Mm -hmm. And so he doesn't really understand at the depth of the value of that quote with great power comes great responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that is true with psyche as well. And that's not to be something uh, uh, fearful or scary, but it's to help us understand that if we want to become a very powerful person, we first must take on our own self responsibility for all of the things that we've created in our life. You know, we don't, we don't just go through life with things happening to us and it's okay to blame everybody else around us and say, oh, well, that was your fault. That was your fault. That was your fault. Oh, no, no, no. We are creating that experience. Um, one of the other instructors that I dearly love asked me one time, so Karen, how did you set that up for yourself? And I was so frustrated and angry with that comment. <laughs> so I, you know, I, I just, mm. Mm, I shut my mouth and I was like, ooh, that one stings. But he was right. I had set it up. Whatever it was I was talking about, and I don't remember the thing I was complaining about at the moment, but I was complaining about something. And it landed so squarely that it was my responsibility. I had created this and I needed to take a look at how I had set it up for myself. So there's lots of great modalities out there. And I think all of us can learn lots of things from those modalities. But we need to ask ourselves, where am I really at right now? Because Psyche to me is at a place where you're either ready to take it on your life, or maybe you need to do some stair stepping up to that, that particular point. And only you as an individual are going to know if you're there or not. Doesn't mean anything about good or bad. So, so this is what can be so frustrating for some people is that they place themselves in a, in a position of good or bad and being ready has nothing to do with being good or bad. It's just, you're either ready or you're not. And that's fine. You know, take on your life where you're ready to go. Some people are much more in a physical kind of a capacity where they want something that's going to physically make sense to them. Mm -hmm. So perhaps using something like heart math, where they can learn to work with breathing and regulating their, their heart and their brain together so that they create this heart brain coherence. That can be a wonderful first step if they want to engage with something on a more physical aspect. Um, other people want something very spiritual. So maybe they'll go and they'll, you know, study with the spiritual same kinds of experiences because they want to have that kind of spiritual thing, but also still be connected to their body. There's just all different ways of moving through this experience and only you are going to know what's right for you. So I ask people to sense into it. Also call the people that they're interested in studying with and get a bigger picture of what's going on. And of course, read, read about whatever it is you're thinking about engaging with and find out if that's a really good modality for you to be studying. Um, like hypnotherapy, hypnotherapy isn't for everybody either. Uh, there's people have a lot of fears about hypnosis. You know, are you going to make me bark like a dog and quack like a duck? And because they've seen some stage hypnosis things. So they put everything in that capacity where they think this hypnotherapist is going to take over their mind when that's the furthest thing from reality. You know, this is not about mind control. The hypnosis is not about mind control. It's about helping you be in control yeah. of your experience and utilizing your subconscious to support you. Lars, I really think about our subconscious as the most um, beneficial friend that we have in our in our physical existence, yeah. because our subconscious is really tasked with the responsibility of keeping us alive. So our subconscious is governing our heart rate, our blood pressure, our digestion, elimination, um, hunger or not hungry, thirst or not thirsty. It, it, it governs everything, even the cell to cell communication that yeah. is going on within the physical system. It's, it's responsible for keeping us alive. And it doesn't so judge. It doesn't judge. And that's amazing, isn't it? Yes. But think about we've got now they're saying science is saying we've got probably 50 trillion cells. 50 trillion cells in the human body. Yeah. And not all of those are human cells. I think they're saying around like half of those or maybe two thirds of those are not even human cells. So we've got this, this galaxy or this universe right here in one human body 
this whole thing is a system yeah. and this system is so unique biochemically oriented that one size does not fit at all yes we have to really respect the integrity of the system that i am the system that you are and honor that system and work with that system's needs and capabilities and levels of functionality and embrace that and say okay i'm here at this point i want to be over here so how am i going to get from here to here yes. and there will be a way there will be a way it will be revealed to you the most important thing is to keep your own faith that you can make those changes yeah. and psyche is beautiful at helping people embrace change that's one of the most important things it offers us is to realize at the subconscious level that nothing has to last forever we don't have to live with the programming that we were indoctrinated with when we were babies and young children and young adults. And even today, <laughs> yeah. even today, watching TV, listening to radio programs, reading magazines, all that other stuff, we are being programmed. Yeah. We are being programmed and you are a programmable biocomputer, whether you want to think about it that way or not, yeah. we are. So what kind of programming are we going to put in and what kind of programs do I want to change? So I love change. I love my subconscious. It's my best friend ever. It's never going away. I, it's, it is part of me. Mm -hmm. And I get to say what works and what doesn't work for me, what I want and what I don't want for me. And I was pleasing everyone except me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know who I was. Mm -hmm. And so as I got to know myself better, I, I was introduced to Psyche at age 48. And I just hit my 60th birthday this past weekend. So, you know, I've been working... <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. I'm more alive now than I've ever been. So 60 is awesome. I have no problem saying it. And I have no fears about my mature years, you know, whatever those are going to be, because I know that I'm responsible for what I create. So modalities, we were talking about modalities. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? That's what we need to base our decisions on mm -hmm. and know ourselves as best we can at that moment and make a good decision for yourself and know that there's no wrong answer. You might invest some money, but what I always tell people is that investing in yourself is the best return on your investment that you can possibly make because you always have yourself. Yeah. And if you invest in you becoming a better version of yourself, you're giving that gift not only to yourself, not only to your family, but to the rest of the entire world, yes. because we're all connected. We are all connected, whether we realize it or not, we are a human system. We are a planetary global system and we are all connected. Animals, plants, the planet itself. We are one living being. And what we do to ourselves, we're doing to the rest of the world. We do to others as well. And whether you want to look at that from a scriptural perspective with um, Christianity, or you want to look at it from a Native American perspective, the truth is still there. That what we do to ourselves, we do to others, and there is no other way around it. So if we respect this beautiful, you know, being, this physical sense that we have, then we can extend that respect out physically to the rest of the planet. I really, I look at people and I go, wow, that's not a happy body there. You know, I, I look at people, how they walk, how they hold their posture, how they, um, how their physical system is looking. And I can see if people are happy or not happy. And I know that they're interacting with the world in a happy or an unhappy way as well, because this conveys a lot of information. So we're a system and this beautiful system is an energy system. And that energy system broadcasts information to everybody else, whether we realize it or not. Mm -hmm. And that broadcast is picked up by other people. We are broadcasters and we are receivers. We receive that information from other people and we can even be across the room from somebody and go, whew, she's having a bad day today. <laughs> or wow, she's having a great day. I want, I want to know what she's doing. I want to have some of that too. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, we, we're energy beings. And we can sense that we've, I'm sure maybe many of your um, viewers of this program will have had an experience where they'll be thinking about somebody and then they get a text, they get an email, they get a phone call from that other person. And you look at the phone call and you go, oh my God, I was just thinking about you. 
And that is conveyed across time and space which may or may not even exist. Yes. And one of the um, demonstrations of this was um, when the Twin Towers um, had what happened to them uh, take place, there were people all around the world that knew something tragic was happening. Their energy system felt it. And it was also measured. I think it was heart math. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was heart math had sensors set up all around the planet and they've done this study many different times with different kinds of things going on, but um, they were actually able to experience through their instrumentation at different places around the planet, this diminished energy happened just moments before um, the, the explosions or the planes or whatever it was that actually happened took place. Mm -hmm. And to know that the heart knows before the action occurs. There is, a, there is a knowingness within our physical system, and I'm getting all tingly talking about this, but there is a knowingness within our energy system that something is going on before the conscious mind actually registers it. And that's fascinating. That's all scientifically shown. I don't remember what the studies are, but it's been, it's been shown to be true. And guys, we are so amazingly connected. And that's the part that just continues to blow my mind is that we are all connected. We are one organism. Yes. And I, I wanted to share, you know, about this, this body that we have. We think that it's a body. This is my body. This is Karen's body. That's Lars' body. But um, what we really are is this incredibly complex, unique system that operates with a very beautiful balance going on inside of it. And when the balance gets disrupted, we have a dis- that occurs and so all we have to do is bring the body back into balance bring those bring those cells bring those um, energetic properties back into balance and then the body goes oh, oh good I'm working again properly yeah. and so we can look at disease in such a different way now we don't have to look at it as germs and other things that are attacking us and hurting us we already have all of that stuff within us living in balance mm -hmm. what happens is we get out of balance and then the system gets kind of wonky you know it's not working properly but we bring the balance back in and all of those beautiful cells are in harmony again they work together it, think about it 50 trillion cells in this body that you have, that I have, work together harmoniously most of the time. Yeah. Isn't that an amazing thing? We go, you know, we have a community of instructors and we are all very, very different. We present the same material, but each of us present it in a different and unique way because of our life experiences, because of the interactions we've had with other students, et cetera, et cetera. And so it's super important for a person to um, spend some time um, figuring out which instructor do I look, you know, a lot of people do it by visual things. They'll look at a picture. And I've had many people say there was just something about your picture that I felt really a great connection with. And I knew I needed to study with you. And I know this happens with all the instructors or they'll pick up the phone and they'll call me and they'll say, I just needed to hear your voice. I just needed to, to hear more about who you are. And I'll say, yes, I understand that. And then sometimes other people just say, you know, I just need to get a good feel for who you are. And these are our three primary ways we process information, visually, auditorily, and kinesthetically. And so we need to feel good about our decision on all three of those aspects. And usually each one of us has one of those um, ways of processing information that acts as our predominant um, uh, a way of understanding our world. So I'm a very visual person and I look at things. I look at people, I look at data, I look at um, whatever information is available to me. I have to see it. Other people have to feel it. Other people have to hear what's right for them. And it was, we start to tune into these things, these characteristics about ourselves. it helps us make better decisions. And knowing that that's part of our system, that's how we, how we get to know ourselves. That's how we settle in with who we are and, and feel that gut instinct or feel that inner knowing that something is right. 
So these are all things to consider when you're looking at studying with a Psyche instructor. Give yourself some time and do some research and, and notice who is it that's going to be right for you because each of us are different and you're going to learn better with an instructor that you feel, you know, kind of um, connected with than somebody that you feel disconnected with. A disconnected thing is going to be a struggle in the, in the experience. A connectedness yeah. is going to help enhance your learning so that you have a better, um, a better experience all around. Yeah, and the same and the same goes, of course, if you if you don't want to learn it, but you just want to to uh, use it to to get help pretty much. And that goes yeah. for psyche for any modality, right? Absolutely. How many psychologists are out there, how many hypnotherapists are out there, and you can use exactly these three senses and which one is your preferred one and make that decision. Use your yeah. use your senses. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I would also suggest that, you know, sometimes people are not really ready or want a class or a workshop to go to, but maybe they'd really rather work with um, a facilitator, a psyche yeah. facilitator, yeah. such as yourself. And, you know, the same thing applies. You can go to the Psyche International website and you can look at the different photos of the different facilitators. And, you know, people can make a decision about who they'd like to get more information from. I still encourage them, call those people, get a feel for who that is. Does that voice sound good to you? Does it grate in your ears? Is it comfortable and relaxing? Do you feel supported? You know, these are all kinds of things that we wanna um, listen to and make our decisions based on. Yeah. So facilitators or instructors or whatever modality you're considering, taking exactly. all the data. Whatever yeah. it is, yeah.